Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to directly wire your Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus to your 3D printer using the TH3D Direct Wire Kit. We're doing this today on the Ender 5, and we're gonna do this so that we can run OctoPrint on our Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. My name is Alex, this is Modified 3D. Let's take a look at how to do this. All right, so starting off with what you're gonna need for the install, you're gonna want some wire snips, uh, some wire strippers. You may or may not need Allen keys depending on where you mount your uh, direct wire module. You're gonna need the direct wire module itself from TH3D, and this is the mount that is on their uh, page. You can also find it on Thingiverse. There's also plenty of other mount options too if you don't like this one. Uh, this is the lid for the mount. TH3D supplies wiring, uh, however I'm going to opt to use my own. This is 18 gauge copper wire. Uh, this is extra from the heater, uh, so I know it's good quality wire. You're obviously going to need a Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus. This will not work with the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, I do believe it works for the Raspberry Pi 2 and 0, but it's not recommended to run those uh, for performance reasons. You're also going to need a USB to micro USB cord, and this is what's going to power the Pi from our USB ports on the actual module. Now this module can accept anywhere from 6 to 36 volts, if I remember correctly from their website. Our Ender 5 is a 24 volt uh, system. However, I also have this buck converter here that drops the voltage down to 12 volts to run the LEDs. So we can choose to either run this directly from its own wire in the power supply, or to make things easier, I'm just gonna tap into the uh, 12 volt supplied from this buck converter because I have plenty of extra amperage left over. It's only currently powering one small LED strip underneath. So what we're gonna do next is go ahead and find a suitable mounting location. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually mount mine probably right up front here or maybe on the side. I still gotta take a better look at how I actually want it. Um, obviously you're gonna to wanna to take in consideration where you're mounting your Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna be mounting mine right here on the case up front, nice and easy. Uh, I'm just gonna take some probably double-sided tape or Velcro maybe uh, on the bottom and just pop it on there. Um, I do have it hard mounted on my Ender 3 and I don't think I'm gonna go that route just because this looks really clean up here and it's uh, easy to access and out of the way of stuff. So now that we've kind of figured out where we wanna put everything, the next step is to actually run the wire. Remember, anytime we're working on wiring or electrical, we always disconnect the plug from the back and put that aside so that nothing is connected to the wall. We now have no power going through the system and it is safe to work with. Um, if you are gonna be going in from the power supply unit, which I'm assuming most people are, you're gonna to wanna to look for the voltage plus and voltage negative um, symbols on the actual power supply unit. You don't wanna go into the L, the N, or the ground symbol because those are going in for uh, higher current main wiring. This is gonna be the same stuff that you tap into for an easy AVL module or any other little accessories. Um, to access that, there's just four screws on the bottom of the actual printer. However, like I said before, I'm just gonna be tapping into my buck converter. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it this way. So this case is super convenient and it has the cutouts already in place for accessing the wiring. We just gotta remember that our negative wire is going on bottom and our positive wire is going on the top. We can go ahead and loosen these wires, or loosen these screws up and pull the two wires out of the buck converter, just like that. And what we're gonna do is grab the wires that we're gonna feed to the direct wire kit 
strip just a tiny bit off the ends, twist it together with these two, and tighten it back in place. All right, give them both a little tug. They ain't going nowhere. They're in there good. Um, now we're just gonna measure up where we're gonna want these ends going. And it's the same thing. Cut it to length, strip down the end, and then what you're gonna do is we have in plus and in negative. Obviously we're gonna match the plus to plus, negative to negative. Um, if you're looking at it with the USB to the left, the in uh, or positive is on the top and the negative is on the bottom. All right, now we can kind of plan out what we're gonna do with our wiring and where we're gonna mount this. After looking more into it, I'm gonna mount it along the back here, um, along with all this other stuff that I got going on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the screen so I can show you guys better. I've already got it partially removed when I was kind of sizing everything up. Um, originally, I was gonna do it along this top rail. It would have looked really nice there. However, I was wrong uh, about my earlier thinking that this ended here. And in order to slide this up and down, I would either have to take this bottom rail or this bottom rail off. And I don't wanna do that. That's just a lot of extra work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide it along here on this bottom rail where I have my Easy ABL and uh, bed MOSFET from TH3D. So why not add another TH3D product to that rail? Um, if I had a mount like these, which used these uh, like T-slot bolts, then yeah, I could put it anywhere just fine. Um, but this is the mount I have and I wanna get it done today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna orient the USB facing out that way so I can just run it easily up through there. And I'm gonna mount the power supply coming from this way. So what I'll do is I'll cut these wires real short. Um, I guess I'll do that now. Um, just slide this on. It is kind of a tight fit, which I do like. It fits nicely. Um, and the other thing too is I do have plenty of room here uh, for running wires. So what we'll do is we'll find out how long we want these wires. Kind of have it run like they're going to be. And I'll probably cut it right about there. We'll give it some strain relief. Uh, notice how I have a little bit there. I, I don't want it to be like a straight 90. I might even give it just a hair extra because uh, I do have to the very end. There's nothing on the back side that's gonna hurt that. So once we're happy with it, we can uh, take our snippers and snip them and get our strippers and strip them. So what we're gonna do is take our screwdriver, go ahead and loosen up these two bolts. It helps if you have the right size screwdriver too, guys. I do not. Um, this is a Phillips head, and I don't have a small enough Phillips. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and just double check which one is going where. Now that we got uh, our bolts loosened up, we can go ahead and run our wires, how they're gonna be. Uh, go ahead and twist up the ends to make them really nice. Go ahead and insert them. I'm gonna trim this one back a little bit because I don't want any exposed wire out the end. And there was a little bit there. Just cause you don't want it to ground out. This wire is just slightly too big. Uh, this is 18 gauge. I think they recommend 20. 
might have to cut that back a little bit. Um, it doesn't hurt to cut, pull a couple strands out and just snip them off. But we don't need to. And just snug uh, a little bit more. And we're going to do the same thing with the positive, which is going to be going to the bottom connector. And just run that underneath. Now this is a slightly smaller wire. I do want to trim it back just the same. Uh, this I do believe is 20 gauge. At least it fits a lot better going into the block. Now the cool thing about this is if you have the Easy ABL kit, you can power your Easy ABL module from this. So if I had a small little tiny jumper going from one of these USBs to here and a USB up to the Pi, I could do that. Uh, however, there is no need to because I have the wire that they included in the kit. Now that we got those secure, we can just kind of uh, clean them up a little bit. I have that kind of strain relief there and we can put our cap on and this was a really tight fit when I tried it out earlier so I hope I don't break it I was really worried taking it apart but I really wanted to film this for you guys there it goes so that fit really nicely um, we can see it matches the honeycomb design that they use on their bed box or their bed MOSFET box and we printed this using black cherry PLA from Paramount 3D. So this is what it looks like for now. We have the 3B plus just sitting freely here. I'm going to go run to the hardware store tomorrow. It's uh, midnight right now so they're out open. Get some velcro and I'll just get like a strip of velcro to latch that on. Uh, the micro USB comes out the side. Just goes around back, and we'll rotate the printer here so you guys can see this. Just simply goes around back, and I gotta zip tie it in over here. Uh, also gotta pick up those from the hardware store. But it goes underneath the Easy Abel Pro module, and just plugs in right there. There's our direct wire kit, and the direct wire kit is plugged into our buck converter. So now, to test this, I can't turn it on with the Pi plug in because I do not have anything loaded on the Pi and I don't want to damage it because then I can't properly shut it down or SSH into it. But I can test to see if it's wired correctly by just unplugging it, turning it on, and making sure we get no booms. Of course, it does help that your wiring is plugged in. It also helps if you can see where the plug is. <laughs> Bear with me guys, like I said, it's late at night. Turn it on. You can see we got 12 volts on the buck converter. We got no smoke coming from underneath here. So that is a good sign. That's how you install your direct wire kit for a Raspberry Pi. My name is Alex, this is Modified 3D, thank you for watching, have a good one, and please subscribe.